Hello and welcome to another session of Kasi Talk. Today we're focusing more on health and sanitation entrepreneurship and I couldn't be more excited. This is a topic that we need everybody to take more notice of. Our guest in studio is Mr. Katlejo Matate. He is the CEO and founder of EcoFinance. Mr. Matate. Uh, thanks a lot for having me. Thank you so it's much. It's quite a pleasure to be here at Bula Bula. Tell us a little bit about who Katlejo is. Um, I'm a, I'm a con legal consultant. I'm a healthcare consultant. Mm. I'm the founder of Ecofinesse. How did you get there? Was this always, was this always a passion of yours? Um, or, or, you know, how did you get to Ecofinesse? What is Ecofinesse? Uh, Ecofinesse is a health and sanitation company. Mm -hmm. uh, we manufacture and supply hygiene care detergents, mm. um, sanitation equipment. We provide uh, occupational health care and safety consultancy. Okay. We supply your paper products, your toilet papers, mm. your wipes, mm. your, your serviettes, mm. your tissues, your, your hygiene care uh, signs, your mm. uh, wet floor signs. Really? Yeah, so anything within hygiene care, yeah. hygiene care and sanitation, we supply. How did, you, how did you figure that out and how did you identify that gap? If it go to your local spaza shop, mm. your local um, umama or things mm -hmm. mm. you'd, you'd find a lack of quality hygiene care okay. within her kitchen. Mm. Um, you'd probably find in most cases, mm -hmm. um, she won't be using any gloves to, to mix the flour. Yes, yeah. uh, you won't find any um, those hair caps. Mm. You don't find any hand sanitizers before she mm. walks in the kitchen and mm. before she leaves the kitchen. Mm. So in most cases, the food might be contaminated with germs. And mm. so um, not even just like businesses. We can even go to any township now. 80% mm. of the female bathrooms mm. don't have um, something basic such as sanitary bins mm. for, for women. You'd find a lack of toilet seat wipes. Yeah. So all that uh, it contributes to the lack of quality hygiene care okay. within, our, uh, within our environment, within uh, our households and our businesses. Mm. How did you bridge your interest with law and health and sanitation? Do you feel like it was a calling? Do you feel like you were so you know, bothered by what was happening in the community that you thought that if I can definitely do both? Or how did you yeah. do that? Yeah. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 14, 14, 15. What does that look like? At 14, what are you selling? Well, I used to sell wine glasses. Really? Wine glasses, champagne glasses, okay. but then they were made from recycled glass. Mm -hmm. So we'd cut the glass with a, with a oh, glass cutter. So we'd use the top as the holder. Yes. So we'd use the, this patch yes. and just glue it on the bottom. Okay. And it would be like uh, a wine glass, a wine glass. or okay. a champagne so you glass. Were yeah, part of recycling. Yeah. So, my plan was to always, once I qualify, I'll use my LLB degree and use it into um, into doing healthcare consultancy. Mm, mm. Uh, I'd make sure that businesses comply with the with got the it. occupational healthcare and safety regulations. Mm. So you advocating for correct usage of, of, of healthcare products or even just 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 the knowledge of, of correct hygiene in communities. Correct. How did the inspiration behind Ecofinance come? I mean it's grown so much, the ideation itself. Mm. What was the inspiration? I wanted to provide quality organic products mm. to the community. Non toxic hand sanitizers, mm -hmm. uh, non toxic air freshness. Mm -hmm. So that's where the name Eco comes from. Oh. Yeah, so it was all based on going organic, okay. going eco-friendly eco okay. products, yeah, yeah. So, uh, biodegradable. Mm -hmm. So, and that still is our, our, our core. The finesse, uh, I wanted to supply products, manufacture products with mm -hmm. finesse, mm. make sure that everything comes out with finesse, <laughs> comes out top quality, oh. Yeah, so that's where eco comes from. Okay. Like, how big is your clientele? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to name drop, but yeah. 
just like you really sound like you're doing a lot you're mm. doing big things you you have people who are backing you a hundred percent yeah yeah um in terms of clientele mm. we we do supply uh state-owned enterprises yo, yo. Um, you can call it the government you are in the government <laughs> that's you uh, uh yeah we're there yeah. uh the small businesses that we supply mm. we supply them with household sizes so your oh, one liters your so make it affordable. i mean yeah make it affordable okay. Okay. and okay. i leave that space to the entrepreneurs that i actually build oh yeah so okay. i give them the platform to supply households yeah. yeah and how did you transition from being a supplier to owning your factory yeah. how did you uh, approach people and say this is me this is what i think i'm doing trust me to distribute yeah and then you moved from distributing to i am the man yeah it was basically uh just me negotiating a good price mm. so that i can resell oh. so i started off as a reseller mm. and you know uh, like it came to a point whereby I had to just grow as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I had to just level up as an mm. entrepreneur. <laughs> so um, I, was, I was there, I was just the middleman. Mm. And to sum it up, I was basically a sales rep of the manufacturer mm. because I was pushing product off their shelf. Yes, yes. You understand? Yes. So I was just a middleman. And my goal was to actually be the supplier and be the main person where the products are sourced Applying from. Applying with your shelves. Yeah. yeah. What does this require? Does this require bioscience? Does this require, um, um, you know, up and coming scientists, you know, mm. interns? What does it require? Like, what does your network look like? Uh, I went to NYDA mm. with uh, my financials. Yeah. I showed them, listen, this is how much sure. products are moving. Yes. And my goal is to is to manufacture mm. so with my numbers now i need your help mm. to help me manufacture the products mm. that i actually buy somewhere mm. so currently we work from uh Ekuruleni mm -hmm. and and soweto mm. so we have all all that we need we have our machines there mm. our, our bot our packaging mm -hmm. packaging material mm. our labels uh, we source our, our raw materials from uh from a company so we have the formulations to manufacture. Okay. Uh, we trained wow. to manufacture. Wow. We come together, um, we share knowledge, yeah. show uh, people who are interested in learning okay. how to manufacture and yeah. I'm very interested though in finding out how you identified the sanitation industry as a gap yeah. or, or what gap you sought to fill in it that you felt, you know, that industry is something that you would find success in. Yeah. For me, um, growing up in Soweto, uh, I got to realize that a lot of households and um, businesses lacked quality hygiene care. It's something that, that was actually needed mm. in the township, for township mm. businesses, mm -hmm. for township households. Mm. We never had a company uh, that actually supplied quality hygiene care and sanitation products. To the community. To the community. And, and I want to, I just want to throw something in there. Yeah. I think the difference with what you say, what you are, the difference with the product and your service offering, if I'm, if I, if I'm understanding you correctly, is that yeah. you also take it upon yourself to educate the communities within which you service. Correct. Because yeah. we do already have um, hygiene brands on the market mm -hmm. that are well-known household brands, you mm -hmm. know, but that's just about it. You get it on the counter yeah. and you have to see to finish. Yeah. You know, you're not going to name drop anything, mm. but... I think you're selling the difference in that you, you make it a point to educate mm -hmm. and consult with the communities in which you service and make, make hygiene and make um, hygiene awareness yeah. um, a, yeah. very, a, very, a very knit part of mm -hmm. people's families. Correct. Yeah. So um, one of our clients are, are schools. Mm. So with regard to schools, we normally go to schools, mm. um, teach the kids how to wash their hands, mm. just to eliminate bacteria, the spread of, of germs. Mm. So we do a lot of teaching in that sense. Mm. We also go to, we also visit local businesses in the townships. Uh, we give them a range and show them, listen, we have a tile cleaner mm. that's specifically made for tiles. Mm. We have uh, a disinfectant mm. specifically made 
to disinfect your equipment, your, your knives, your mm. forks, okay. your, your boards where you, where you chop your, mm. your food. Yeah, yeah. How have you remained resilient insofar as your challenges? One of my challenges was to just uh, create trust within like, the community like, yes. and, and my clients. Yeah, just to shift them away from this company and support 100% black-owned, youth-owned company yes. that manufactures. Mm -hmm. Another challenge was to actually, um, was to supply corporates. You went from supplying to a wide range of service offering, sanitation, mm -hmm. hygiene awareness, and there must have been barriers to entry. There must have been some toes you stepped on, someone who wasn't happy. This industry, I don't think, has always been made or cut out for just everybody. So how did you really just rupture that, that the barriers to entry? And how did you get here? How did you find your footing? Uh, I have a legal background, mm. the legal aspect of, of business, mm. making sure that like, like you document yes, everything, everything the, the agreements, supplier agreements, just make sure because I've been burnt before, whereby I concluded a concluded a contract, which was done verbally, and because uh, nothing was written down, sure. that actually almost took us under. Yeah. yeah. So we had to just rise above, rise above that, uh, yeah. make sure that make sure we stay afloat, and just like it was it was quite challenging. Yeah. As, you are cool as a cucumber. I don't know how. Are you like rowing like a duck at the bottom and, and keeping it up? You so like you, you just you know. I had it going. It's, you you cool. You so. Is it is it is it the fortitude over the years that's taught you to be so graceful? What is it? You make entrepreneurship. You know you you're describing the truth about your journey and mm. so candidly that I'm just thinking, is it always like this? Mm. I mean, I, I know everyone doesn't have the same journey, but you are so cool, man. Do you think that entrepreneurship should be taught in schools? Uh, definitely so. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you why. Yeah. Uh, some of the subjects mm -hmm. we are taught in high school, they don't actually apply in real life. Mm. <laughs> in, in they don't apply in real life. In, <laughs> in most cases, in most mm. cases. Because mm. uh, think about it, maybe uh, your goal is to be a plumber. Mm -hmm. And now someone is teaching you, I don't know, um, you're learning biology or, and I mean, in that space of biology, um, you could be taught how to manage your funds, mm. how to manage your finances. So you brought us goodies today. So we have mm. some goodies in the studio with us and we're going to look at a bit of your products. Um, what do you have with us? I have my dishwashing liquid here, the okay. one we manufacture. Yeah, um, as well as? as well as uh, the pine gel. Okay. The pine gel is your multi-purpose disinfectant. Okay. okay. How big is this bottle? So one liter. One liter? Mm -hmm. One liter detergent. How long is that supposed to last me? Um, it could last you, depending on the household, it should last you close to one and a half months. Okay. Walk me through this, this pine gel. How big is this? What, what, what is this? That's a one kg. One kilogram. Yeah. What does mm. it go for? Uh, it goes for 25 rand. And that's the thing about our pricing. Uh, because we manufacture, mm. we manufacture now, we can uh, make sure we price it at an affordable rate mm. to suit the market. Mm. Mm. I'm so excited. I want one of these and I just want to go find something to do in my house with mm. it. I just want to go <laughs> home and use it and just about yeah. anything. Start wiping door handles or something. Mm. I'm very much excited about your product. This is such an exciting time. Tell me some of the beliefs that you live by, both for the company or mm. and individually, as the, as the businessman, as a career man. What mm. are some of the beliefs that you live by? Just focus on whatever, focus on your goals, focus on your dreams, and you'll you'll soon be successful yeah. mm. in whatever you want to do. It mm. could be sports, everything. everything. Yeah. You spoke about mentoring quite mm. briefly as the conversation was progressing. Mm. How many people are under your wing? Uh, and is there room for more? Oh, that's that's uh, There's always room that's one topic I want to actually touch on. Yeah. Uh, currently, I have six guys, it's six six entrepreneurs who are, who I'm pushing in business, who I'm teaching wow. in business, who I'm guiding in yeah. business. Uh, but next year, um, 
we plan to do, we plan to go into an enterprise development. Uh, as Ecofinance, we, we plan, mm. yeah, we plan that to. Is so great. We plan to take about 15 entrepreneurs, yeah. young entrepreneurs, uh, teach them how to do the labeling mm. of products, mm. teach them account, the accountancy system, mm. teach them um, how to actually sell. Sell products. How to actually just enter market, yes, enter the marketplace. The competitive advantage. The competitive advantage. So, and great. yeah, that's our goal for 2019. Top. You said 15 new entrepreneurs. We, we make sure we we stick to business to business. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we take just young young guys from the streets, uh, mm. from the townships. We teach them how to how to sell. We teach them how to actually price the, 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 their products. Mm -hmm. We teach them how to, just to be confident mm. in, 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 selling, in selling their products. Mm. Stay glued to what this man is doing. He's doing big things. Let's go out there. Let's help. Let's go out there. Let's help other small companies. Okay. Let's approach big companies. And yeah. And challenge them. And actually. challenge them. You know, there there is a, there's, there's this re there's the reimagining of the African dream and so mm. we have to have to challenge them. We're not saying there will always be barriers to entry, but mm. challenging is important. Yeah. Get people out of their comfort zones because yeah. we know where the money is now. We know where the money is flowing. And yeah. We yeah. won't get a stake or even our hand in the jar if we don't challenge. If, if we don't, uh, I mean, we can't be comfortable. Before we close, where can we find you? Social media, contact details, website? Uh, you, you can visit our website. Mm -hmm. It's www.ecofinesse.co.za. It's not hyphenated or anything. There's not eco dash. It's just no. one thing. One word: ecofinesse.co.za. Okay. Uh, you can find us on Insta. Mm -hmm. uh, it's eco underscore finesse. Okay. You can find us on Twitter. Yeah. Twitter as well. It's eco underscore finesse. Okay. Uh, you can find me on my personal Insta account. It's Katlerho uh, KM. Facebook. Facebook at Lejo Matate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, have a Facebook we have a Facebook page. Okay. Uh, Ecofinesse. Mm. Yeah, it's there. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much. High yeah. five. You're a good man. Thanks. That's a good man. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. It was another amazing session. I have so much questions. I, I really want to keep them here all day, but we can't. Please, please, please do stay tuned in to more sessions of Kasi Talk. I am Sianda Wagamavoso. We are Vola Research Services and we are out.